Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Toss a coin to your Witcher. Netflix just released the first look at Liam Hemsworth as Geralt, recasting from the Henry Cavill version. There's so much going on here, so much to unpack. Even though Liam Hemsworth, amazing person, it is definitely, definitely a huge downgrade for the show. I'll explain what's going on, why they recast, like why Henry Cavill quit The Witcher, and what they're doing to explain the recasting, like how the show is going to actually deal with his version of the character. It will come as no surprise that Netflix is basically going to speed run the rest of the story. They've essentially ended the show. It's effectively canceled. They're just going to finish out the story that they already planned on doing. But basically, it's done with this version of his Geralt. Just finish your pages, pack it up, and go home. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll also be doing videos for Henry Cavill's Warhammer series, like Henry Cavill moving on to much bigger things, particularly his own Warhammer series and a bunch of movies that he's working on behind the scenes. You can kind of see the way they ease into this trailer too. Like they show you a bunch of other stuff for Geralt before they actually show you Geralt himself recast as Liam Hemsworth. They start on a shot of the new version of Roach that he's going to have during this season. The joke about the Roach character, the horse, if you're not a big fan of the books, is because he's so long lived, Geralt goes through many different versions of Roach and just names each of his new horses Roach. The games treat this a little bit differently, like he has the same version of Roach in the games, but that's just based on the way that the games actually play out. In the books, he goes through several different versions of Roach, so it's kind of an in-joke with the book fandom. Then you see his Witcher medallion from the School of the Wolf, and then you actually see Liam Hemsworth's face. Part of the reason why they release this now, instead of just waiting till much later in the year, because the season isn't coming out till December, like they're going to air season 4 episodes around the same time that season 1 and season 2 episodes aired, is mostly because they've been filming a lot for season 4 outdoors, so people had already actually seen what Liam Hemsworth as Geralt actually looked like. So essentially, Netflix had been sitting on this footage for a long time, like, why don't you release the official version of people seeing the janky version behind the scenes? The weird thing is that the scenes that we actually got to look at are them filming new versions of season 3 scenes. Like, this is the Geralt versus Vilgefortz fight from season 3, but with Liam Hemsworth doing the fight. Like, it's playing out the same way, but with Liam Hemsworth. Zoom and enhance on some of these scenes. This is Liam Hemsworth wearing Henry Cavill's Geralt Season 2 Witcher armor. So it looks like they're recreating some Season 2 scenes as well. And as weird as that sounds, what might be going on is it has something to do with the way that they're introducing his recast version of the character. If you have not read the Witcher books, there's a character called Nimue, the Lady of the Lake, renowned sorceress born many decades after Geralt first met Yennefer and Ciri. So in Nimue's time, like in the distant future, the Witcher's main characters have become these legendary figures. Their stories spread across the continent. Many versions of their story exist with many different interpretations, different accounts of the events, and even some different descriptions of the characters' appearances. So now it's starting to make sense how they're going to explain this recasting. What it looks like they're doing is we're going to be introduced to a new accounting of the tale according to which Geralt looks like Liam Hemsworth. When they have other people in the distant future recounting the tale of the Witcher, some things might go down a little bit differently, but I think for the most part, based on this footage here, like the Geralt versus Vilgefortz fight from season three, largely things will play out the same way. And part of the idea is that in this distant future timeline, when the story is being retold by other people, it's being told to Nimue, the Lady of the Lake, by Stribog. I believe he's being played by Clive Russell here from Game of Thrones. Most people will remember him as the Blackfish. He was great on Game of Thrones. If you haven't seen his episodes, I would recommend going back and watching them. During the books, he appears at the beginning of the final chapter of Baptism of Fire, the third novel in the Witcher books. That's going to serve as part of the plot of Season 4 along with the fourth book, Tower of the Swallow. When the character of Stribog is introduced, he's gathering a group of young children in the future, including Nimue, to tell stories of Geralt, Yennefer, Ciri. So this is this crucial moment for Nimue as she would later develop an obsession with the legend of the Witcher, the Sorceress, and Ciri. Later, she starts investigating the many different versions of their story from across the continent in an attempt to discover what really happened to them. The only difference is in that version of the book story, it's the older version of Nimue that later goes trying to track down the correct version of the story. What they might do during season 5 is just have the young version come back, like the exact same version, same actress, trying to track down the correct version of the story as she learns about the rest of their legend. As much as I am bummed out by the whole situation, like really sad that Henry Cavill left and they had to do this whole recasting, it does sound like they're going to say that Henry Cavill's version is canonically the correct version of The Witcher, and Liam Hemsworth is just from one of these retellings. 
But here's the big opportunity for them when they officially do wind up ending the show with Nimue going around getting different versions of the story. This is also an opportunity for them to be able to bring back Doug Cockle as a live action version of Geralt and just say that he's one of the versions of Geralt from one of these other retellings. For those of you really big game fans out there that wanted to see Doug Cockle come back and play a version of live action Geralt. If you look at the dates when Henry Cavill actually quit The Witcher, I think what happened is that at the time, the filming schedule has started to conflict with the movie offers he started to get after the Justice League debacle had settled down. He started to do way more movies just in general. And there was this whole push for him to become the next James Bond for a while. That's still kind of going on right now, but I do not think that he's going to be the next James Bond. All the new DC Superman plans he had started to conflict a little bit with the Witcher's filming schedule. And there were a lot of reports about him having conflicting ideas about how to adapt Geralt versus the writers on the show. If you remember, Bo DeMeo, who actually is the showrunner on X-Men 97, fantastic series, really loving what they're doing on X-Men 97 right now. Bo DeMeo was actually the writer on The Witcher who also criticized some of the writing of that show and the way they were changing Geralt and the other characters from the books. Very weird coincidence that it just happened to be him. But Henry Cavill had always wanted a more book-accurate Geralt, and the show just was not writing him that way. He wasn't a producer on the show either, meaning that he didn't have a lot of control over the actual direction of the show. So I think everyone's just generally in agreement that he saw all these things coming at him from different angles as signs that he needed to leave the show. Like he's got way too many even bigger things in the hopper ready to go. The Witcher's starting to get into way at that. And also, he's not a super big fan of the way they're adapting the show. So he leaves, but then DC Warner Brothers hire James Gunn, recast all the Justice League actors, Henry Cavill suddenly out as the main Superman, all those DC plans gone away in an instant. But around that same time that was all happening, he announced his new Warhammer series and Warhammer movies that he was working on at Amazon, like completely different streamer. He's also been doing a ton of other just regular non-IP movies just in general. So just generally things are looking pretty good for Henry Cavill. As dirty as it seems like he was done by DC, Netflix, he'll come out of this fine. It sounds like based on the way things are going, his Warhammer series probably isn't going to premiere till at least 2026. It could be later than that, just depending on when they eventually start filming. I think the general idea is that if the first Warhammer series does well, they'll do Warhammer movies also set in that universe. It'll be an interconnected universe of story, basically. I'll do more Warhammer videos when they make more announcements about who he's playing. I did a couple trailer videos for the early teasers he released. I'll link them at the end of this and down in the description below. He gave some clues as to who he might be playing. If you were one of the people who really wanted to see the conclusion of The Witcher story, you will get a version of that. The biggest new characters they've added for season four here, Lawrence Fishburne's Regis is a powerful higher vampire. He's over 400 years old when he meets Geralt with the company of dwarves led by Zoltan, who's played by this actor here. So because they're doing an episode one read through here, they might actually just show them meeting for the first time in episode one in a flashback. Regis eventually winds up helping Geralt rescue Ciri, deal with Vilgefort, so he becomes a big ally to Geralt. And a lot of the other newer characters in this free through here are from the rats group that Ciri joined at the end of season three. So there'd be a lot of her with the rats at the beginning of season four. There was actually supposed to be a spin-off TV show Netflix was doing about the rats like they did with Witcher Blood Origin. I don't know if that's still happening or if they canceled it too, if they just canceled the Witcher series. Like we're going to wrap it up as quickly as possible and boom, that's it. What they'll probably do during season four and season five is they'll have her eventually run into Avalak from Blood Origin, the time traveling elf, paying off the post credit scene from that when he was watching Siri during the events of The Witcher season one. I don't know if they're going to save Vilgefort's ending for season five. His big final battle with Geralt isn't until the last Witcher book, Lady of the Lake, which makes sense. Season five will also have to end with Siri facing the wild hunt with Geralt, also facing the White Frost, which is the show adapting some of the stuff from the games. If you haven't read the books, the game story actually picks up after the ending of the book story. In fact, they had to retcon some of the end of the books in order to start the games. But a while ago, the showrunner did say that they would be adapting stuff from the games and from the books. So no surprise there. And a lot of the stuff they are adapting from the games, particularly the White Frost, they've also changed in a big way. During the games, the White Frost is meant to be like the ultimate main villain that Siri has to face. Like the whole reason why her Elder Blood program, the elves originally created, exists. They implied that it's more of like this great ice age that's going to come and destroy the entire planet and they wanted to create a being that was powerful enough to stop that from happening. But on the show they made it seem like the White Frost is an actual person and heavily implied that it's actually Falka who is from the Witcher books. She was an elf that was burned at the stake in the distant past. 
So it kind of makes it seem like the TV show is turning the overall story of The Witcher into like a glorified revenge story, like Falca burned at the stake is coming back to enact her revenge on the world. The other big change they made to the Wild Hunt too from the games, they made the Wild Hunt seem like they're more servants of Falca White Frost now. But everyone post all your reactions in the comments below and everybody's still really bummed out that Henry Cavill left the show. Like, why do I want to watch the show now without Henry Cavill? What I'll probably do is at least like one big wrap up video for season four and for season five when they do eventually come out. And like I said, Henry Cavill will probably continue to tease his Warhammer series, but I'm not expecting to hear a bunch about that till like either later this year or next year. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. I just did a bunch of Fallout videos. Click here for my Fallout Season 2 and Season 1 ending video and click here for that Henry Cavill Warhammer trailer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.